Give My Regards to Broad Street is a 1984 album and film starring Paul McCartney. The film was directed by Peter Webb and was written by Paul McCartney. Today we'll be taking a look at the film, the soundtrack, and its lead single, No More Lonely Nights. The film is a sort of rock and roll fantasy about a day in the life of Paul and Linda McCartney. They're working on a new album when it's revealed that the master tapes for it have been stolen. They need to get the tapes back to the studio by midnight, or the studio will be taken over by the evil Mr. Wrath. Throughout the day, Paul, Linda, and Ringo record, rehearse, and film music videos. Sprinkled throughout are bizarre fantasy sequences where Paul daydreams about the events of the day. By the time evening hits, the tapes are still nowhere to be found. Paul goes to Broad Street, finds the tapes, and gets them back just in time. Then it's revealed that everything we just saw was a dream. They shamaland us! Paul had wanted to act again ever since the Beatles movies. After this film, however, he wouldn't act in a film again until his cameo in Pirates of the Caribbean. Ringo originally wanted to be the villain in this movie. The film was actually based on a real event where Paul lost a recording tape during a traffic jam. During the film, Paul pretended to be a street musician and some people actually stopped and gave him money, not realizing that it was him. The film was made for about $9 million, but only brought in about one point four. Peter Webb never directed another film. There was a ZX Spectrum and a Commodore 64 video game based on this movie. The short film Rupert and the Frog Song was shown after the film while in theaters. The film has only seen a VHS and Region 1 DVD home release. The soundtrack is made up of remakes of Beatles songs, solo work, and some new material. The album was recorded between December of 1982 and July of 1984. Paul reunited with George Martin to produce the album. Originally, Paul wanted all the material to be recorded live during the film, but Martin convinced him that this was a bad idea. He then suggested that they do what was done on the R World performance with the Beatles, that they have pre-recorded tracks that the acts would then perform live with vocals and instruments. They would then mix all these tracks together to get the best take. Ringo didn't particularly care for this idea. He didn't like the idea of having to choose which of his tracks was the best. The Beatles tracks were heavily reworked to differentiate them from the original tracks. Fan reaction to the album, specifically these reworkings, has been mixed throughout the years. The standout track and lead single was No More Lonely Nights. It was the last song recorded for the film, and it was done in one three-hour session. For the track, Paul brought in legendary Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour. Gilmour had a great time with the piece, and told McCartney to give his musician's fee to charity. The single release also featured a play-out version on the B-side. Most would agree that this is probably the best thing to come out of this film, and the soundtrack as well. The single did really well, much better than the actual film. With the soundtrack, there was a controversy, as the vinyl release was shorter and actually advertised the CD version that it had longer tracks and extra material. This upset many fans who either didn't have a CD player at the time, or felt that they had to buy the album twice in order to get the full experience. Overall, I still enjoy this film. It's a guilty pleasure. It's bizarre, sure, but it's harmless. Paul is so charming, you can forgive it. If you're a Beatles fan, check it out. It's weird, it's wild, just enjoy it, it's stupid. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have an idea of what I should talk about next, please leave your comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please support this channel by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing, and I will see you guys next time.